Biology is life. Okay, I love biology. It's beautiful. Biology paper 2, 2021, GCE. Um, paper 2, yeah. So, let's get to the questions. Our section A should answer questions, like answer all questions. Question 1, the diagram below shows an incomplete reaction for a certain chemical, a certain characteristic of a living thing, a characteristic. Uh, A1, identify substance F, glucose, that's glucose, okay, blood sugar. Number two, what characteristic of living things is illustrated by the reaction? Respiration. That's respiration. Breakdown of glucose in the presence of oxygen to produce carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Do you ever wonder why some snakes don't drink water? Like they don't really drink much water. Even cockroaches and other, you know, hard um, skeleton, exoskeleton animals. It's because after they respire from whatever they, they eat, uh, the water that comes from their respiration gets to their bodies or remains in their bodies for longer periods so they don't really get to need much water from the outside but for you and me we're like elephants man we need water every day we move uh b uh which characteristic of living things produces substance f synthesis and assimilation okay synthesis and assimilation uh i married these two which characteristic of living things produces substance f this f is glucose so the characteristic is synthesis and assimilation plants are able to make even humans can make hormones in their bodies they can synthesize uh chemical substances within their bodies and some of those are actually important okay so synthesis uh, number two uh, name three uses of energy in living things growth yeah reproduction yeah i can i can, I can see uh, yeah, i can see number three active transport oh yeah number c one what type of uh, metabolic reaction is the illustrated in the diagram above catabolism breakdown okay, catabolism involves breakdown number two set one characteristic of living things which does not take place throughout the life of the living thing this one got my head scratched my my head was wondering because i scratched it so much it wondered where if if i told it was still the same arm or hand that's that scratches it I think I went to reproduction because reproduction usually tends to be, you know, menopause and all those things. I don't know which one. I really had to think hard, but I think reproduction. Yeah, I think this one somehow suffices. So we'll get to the next question. If we have lost one, then it should be this one. Help me on this one. But I think we have more than seven. We move. Question two, figure two shows the state. The stage is involved in the in an enzyme catalyzed reaction uh, inside cells of a living body. The cell, the unit of structure and function of an organism. So, a um, from stage one, identify the enzyme. The enzyme is I, I, I. Okay. Um, the enzyme is not changing throughout the whole process. This structure is not changing. Substance, substrate. The substrate is actually G and H. These are the two substrates that are being involved in the this actually this is synthesis they're being joined together okay number b1 which stage shows the enzyme substrate complex this one here too the next one label the active site on the enzyme this is the active site okay that's the active site right there i couldn't put one here because there are more like two of them okay one for this and one for that then they join number c1 what type of uh, metabolic reaction is uh, catalyzed by the enzyme in the figure anabolism not cutter but anabolism building up synthesis c2 name the region in the human body where such metabolic reactions in c1 above occur in the liver formation of glycogen okay glycogen is simply uh, a polymer of glucose in the liver so glucose molecules have to be joined just like these guys are being joined so in the liver i could think of that at least um Number C3, state the general term used to refer to enzymes that work inside cells, intracellular enzymes. Those that work outside are called extracellular. Uh, D, describe two industrial applications of enzymes. There are many of them. In brewing, therefore involving fermentation, and even in baking, uh, these two are very similar. Okay, there are other uses of enzymes like in the making of uh, uh, baby food okay uh, and also in the making of um, uh, leather where you turn the leather to make it softer and others like um, what, in, in, the, in the making of uh, biological washing powders or pests okay so we move 
Okay, so question three, life is beautiful. Life is biology, biology is life. Life is time, but time is not life. So shows part of an organism of a plant. An organ of a plant, not organism, organ of a plant. I'm cruising because I really want to cover a lot in a short period of time. And I know you can download this or watch this over and over and over to simply know, wow, yeah. So that's our leaf right there, an organ. An organ, but I'm already able to tell it's a leaf. So um, A1, and in five, structures g and k uh g is a cuticle layer okay the cuticle layer up there then k is the gut cell okay k is a, is a gut cell number a2 state one structural difference between um state one structural difference between cells g and j okay g and j um g is up there upper epidermis j lower epidermis a structural difference that g produces wax thus appears shiny than j um yes that's a structural difference it produces more wax if anything so you find that leaves appear more shiny up there and um below the epidermis below is more hairy okay uh therefore than j there's less wax down there so um, I don't know about that one. You can help me on that one structural difference. Um, number. Okay, maybe let me just get back to this before I even go any further. I can correct this. I can add more volume. The layer below here has got stomates, while the layer up there has got less stomates. So there are more stomates down here than up there. And then there's more wax up there than down here. So those are both structural differences. But here there are more stomates or stomata than up there i think that also suffices there though i haven't written it so the next question identify the plant uh, organ that's a leaf in which region of in which region is the rate of photosynthesis highest region h the palisade layer the palisade layer okay and um region h is here the palisade layer okay um give a reason for your answer Plenty chloroplast in tightly packed cells. So there's plenty of chloroplast and the cells are regularly arranged. They don't leave any spaces for, for, for light to go to waste. Number D, explain why the arrangement of cells in region labeled I is important for photosynthesis. It allows the passage of gases as they diffuse in and out of the leaf. Therefore, region J is here. This is the, uh, the, the, the spongy mesophyll, which has a lot of air spaces. We move on to the next question. Um, figure four shows a human elbow joint um, in longitudinal section. That's our, our elbow joint there. Uh, name the parts labeled A, B, C. A is the cartilage on the bone here. Okay, B is the sign of your membrane. C, that is the capsule. Okay, the capsule, or you can just call it the ligament capsule. Okay, sign of your membrane, uh, cartilage, um, ligament capsule. They are called ligaments when they are found uh, in joints, and they are called tendons when they are joining a muscle to a bone. Uh, B, give one function of each in A above. Car cartilage cushions shock, okay, apart from reducing friction or preventing friction uh, when the, the joint is moving. Number B, uh, the synovial membrane produces our novel fluid, which, is, which lubricates the joint. Then C, which is our ligament capsule, holds the bones in the joint okay it holds the bones together in the joint number c one part d or e can be affected by which part d or e can be affected by cancer of the bone part e okay part e this is sponge bone not sponge bob and this is compact bone so this one has got more cells so cancer of the bone can actually uh, infect this and apart from that uh, this is white marrow uh, this is more of white marrow has got more of white in other words uh, white blood cells develop so much in the in the in the uh, appendicular skeleton so and uh, cancer of the of the bone may, may also be part of that okay let me just say uh, this region here because I may start mixing up a lot of uh, material here so number c2 uh, name the part affected by cancer okay sponge bone yes name the type of joint in figure four above synovial hinge joint synovial hinge joint we have the nine marks there 
if anything if they yeah we have the nine marks let's move on to the next question okay it's now quite late so i'm about to subside like a tsunami uh in this part of the world uh, let me do my last question in this section then we'll do the last question next time when we meet so 5a which is our last question in this section a for this paper uh a1 name two traits in plants that show discontinuous variation i really had to think i think on this one so the aspect of either being a monocot or dicot okay uh shows discontinuous variation number two the aspect of being either flowering or non-flowering it's either a plant flowers or it doesn't flower there's nothing like this season it flowers next season doesn't flower there's nothing like this season it's a monocot the next season these both are characteristics of that show discontinuous variation Number two, set two factors which cause variation in animals, mutations. Then number two, random mating or pairing. Okay, your partner will determine the, your offspring, okay, the, 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 the appearance of your offspring. Then mutations, yes, uh, may cause that. Um, number B, which is our last question there for today as we close uh, this video. Um, in humans, black hair is dominant over blonde hair. Using letters B and B, show using a genetic diagram why a male parent with black hair had some children with black hair and other children with blonde hair uh, with his wife who had blonde hair. So capital letters are used to show dominance. These are used to, the capital small letters are used to show recessiveness. So if the wife had white hair, then she was um, homozygous recessive. If the father had black hair but they still went on to have children with blonde hair it means he was um a heterozygous dominant therefore he was a carrier of a recessive uh gene for uh which codes for uh, white hair so this combination results into some children having black hair and some having white hair uh, these ratios are not so effective when you're talking about offspring that are 10 5 12 50 because and children or maybe people tend to have less children so it's very difficult to have these ratios as 50 50 if you have four children to be black to be blonde it's difficult these ratios come into play when you have maybe 6,000 children okay so they are more visible and more applicable when it comes to large numbers otherwise over small numbers the samples usually are too little for humans to easily notice them but Mendel managed because he was counting thousands and thousands of pea seeds and these came out to be, uh, I would say, accurate. I end here for this session, okay, and um, I'll see you in the next videos. This is Manipa signing off. Bye-bye to you.